So we want to talk about the subject of anger. One of our goals as rebirthers is to overcome anger in ourselves and help our clients overcome anger. And by that, I mean letting go of it completely and learning how to handle it when it does come up and getting to the point we can live without anger. And of course, in rebirthing, we can pump out the anger that we have on the exhale. But eventually, we want to get to the point where we just don't have anger, so that we are completely safe and that our clients feel completely safe you know, with us. There's a lot of different levels of anger. People say, well, I'm not angry, I'm just irritated. See, that's still anger. And the Course in Miracles says, below every irritation is a veil of hate. And irritation is just the tip of the iceberg. So I wrote down all the different gradations of anger. I'm gonna, you don't want to copy this, but just let go of these. And <laughs> it includes all of, the, all of these. Irritation, being snappy, sarcasm, put downs of others, sneering, name calling, heavy energy behind your words, bitterness, resentment, grudges, Aggressiveness, defensiveness, meanness, revenge, verbal abuse. Now we're getting down to the really heavy ones. Hate, rage, violence, and physical abuse would be the worst. So you have to give it all up if you want to be enlightened. In fact, you can't really be enlightened if you hang on to any of this. So what do we do to deal with this? But, you know, first we have to understand what it is. Uh, a real angry person, and some people have had parents who are rageaholics, a real angry person is striving for domination. They are, um, their objective is to destroy anything in their path. And they're trying to use their so-called power to gain superiority. And they have such an inferiority complex that they can't stand anybody that's an equal. They can't tolerate equals or anybody that be more superior than they are. So a person who's like a rageaholic, they have a severe inferiority complex. But what I want to go over as a former nurse is the consequences of anger. You know, it's very dangerous to your health and your body. First of all, it produces circulatory changes in your body. It um, spikes your heart rhythms, of course, raises your blood pressure, you know that, I'm sure. But it also lowers your immune system. It uh, disturbs your digestive tract, and your whole organism becomes disoriented. And so it really leads to disease. And I'm talking about any kind of anger, overt or covert, expressed or suppressed. It doesn't matter which, which kind of anger it is. Now, People don't realize they have anger. For example, you may be sitting there and saying, well, I don't feel angry. But you may have a lot of suppressed anger. For example, let's look and see where you're at forgiving your parents. Too. So write down my mother. Just write those two words down. And on a scale of 0 to 10, what number do you get in forgiveness for your mother? 10 would be you totally forgive her for everything. 0 would be none. Five would be half. So just pick a number and put it down by your mother, whatever comes to mind. Okay, then write down my father and pick a number for him. Zero is no forgiveness, ten is total, complete forgiveness for everything, five is half. Okay, then pick the sibling you have the hardest time with. If you had several siblings, put down the name of the sibling that you had the hardest time with. Put down their name. What number would you give that for that sibling? The next one would be your ex-partner. If you were, um, if you've been married before, or in a relationship before, pick a number for that. Put that person's name down. What number of forgiveness do you get for them? And the last one is myself. Write down myself and where are you at forgiving yourself. Ten would be total, complete forgiveness for everything, all lifetimes. <laughs> so pick a number for that. Okay, now obviously.
honestly, the idea is to be at 10 in all of these. And if you're not at 10 in all of these, that means you still have anger. You may not be feeling it, but it's still there, you see. And the problem is what you haven't forgiven, you attract. And you have a, a kind of a psychic hook with that person that you haven't forgiven. You're stuck. We call it aqua cords in Hawaiian spirituality. There are psychic attachments. This means you're psychically attached to the person you haven't forgiven. I think the worst consequence, I'm talking again about the consequences of anger, the worst consequence is hostility shuts out the mind of God. You cannot channel divine intelligence or infinite intelligence if you're angry. Anger of any type prevents you from going to the higher levels of consciousness. Because when you're angry, you're vibrating at a very low frequency, a very low plane. And Amaji here, this is Amaji, our teacher, and she says, anger makes you weak in every cell of your body. Some people have the erroneous idea that anger makes them stronger. It's really the opposite. Because anger will drain your energy. And another thing, another consequence of anger that people don't realize is that through anger and non-forgiveness, much of the power that you gain in spiritual practices can be lost. So you could be meditating for 20 years, and if you haven't given up your anger, you could lose all the value that you gain from that meditation. Don't realize that. So it sets you back on your spiritual path. And of course, the Course in Miracles would say the angry people are the people that are most afraid. There's only love or fear. And anger would come under the category of fear. So it's usually a cover up for fear. And the main thing the Course in Miracles would say is that anger and love cannot coexist together. So when you're angry, you're not in a state of love, period. You can't say, oh, I love and I'm angry. <laughs> they cannot coexist together. Anyway, anger is, is not the language of progress. And a great criteria for spiritual maturity is whether you've forgiven your parents. You're not spiritually mature if you haven't forgiven your parents. And in the old days of the mystic schools, they wouldn't even let you in the door to class if you hadn't forgiven your parents because you were considered unteachable. That's how important it was. <clears throat> Babaji taught me the highest teaching that I've ever found on the subject of anger, what to do with anger. First of all, he said, you don't suppress it because that hurts your body. You don't dump it on somebody else like your mate because that hurts them. Then you're going to feel really guilty. So you don't suppress it, and you don't dump it on anybody. So what do you do with it then? You change the thought that causes the anger. And then you breathe out the charge or the bad energy. You change the thought that causes the anger. See, emotions are spearheaded by thoughts. So if you're angry, it means you have a thought behind that emotion. So the way I try to handle it is if I feel a charge coming on, an anger coming up, I say, I'm feeling activated. Now, I'm not suppressing it, and I'm not dumping it on anybody. I'm acknowledging that I'm having a reaction, and I'm saying I'm feeling activated, and the, the thought I'm having is, oh, you're reminding me of my father, or whatever it is the thought is that's causing me to feel activated. So I'm expressing it, but I don't have to yell, I don't have to dump it on Mark, or I don't have to dump it on my colleagues. I'm not stuffing it. I'm acknowledging that it's there. Then I either have to go get rebirth or run around the block ten times, or if I can't get rebirth, take a cold shower or do something to handle the recharge. Okay? And to me, that's the best way to handle anger, and I've never found a higher teaching.